Hello friends of Dematask Bay. This is the second part of a series of podcasts dedicated to clues and cliches. Now here is another small part of a pigmented lesion with high magnification. Of course it's a dermatoscopic image and what do you, do you see? You see thick reticular lines or in other words an atypical and irregular pigment network. Now this is, as we all know, a clue to melanoma. Now let's look at the entire lesion. And of course in this case it is a good clue and not a cliché. It is a clue to melanoma. The lesion is chaotic because there is an asymmetric arrangement of colors and it has a clue to melanoma which are the thick reticular lines. What do thick reticular lines mean? Well, it means that the lines are thicker than the holes in between. Now let's look at this part here of another lesion. What do you see? You see thick reticular lines, no question, and you also see some black dots at the periphery. So again, melanoma. Now look at the lesion. It is very well demarcated. It has thick reticular lines, and it also has some yellow clots, and it also has some black clots, which could be close to melanoma, but they also could be comedo-like openings, which is infundibular stuff with keratin. So taken together, here the thick reticular lines are not a clue to melanoma, they are a clue to severe keratosis. This is what it is. So the same criterion can be a clue or a cliché, depending on the context. Now here what you see, you see circles. Here you see some small circles. We know that circles on facial skin has a very peculiar meaning. It means pigmentation around the follicle openings. But this is not facial skin. You see some circles, but you also see some ovals here and here and here. And taken together, when you see circles and ovals, on non-facial skin, this is a very good clue to seborrheic keratosis. Here you see seborrheic keratosis, two, one, two, and you see the circles and these ovals. And when you see this, this is a good clue to seborrheic keratosis. Now, clue or cliche, here what you see, parallel lines, we are on acral skin, and you see parallel lines on the ridges or in the furrows. These lines here are on the ridges. The ridges are always broader than the furrows. So, as you know, parallel lines on the ridges in an acral lesion are a clue to melanoma. But this case is not a melanoma. This is the entire case and you see sharp demarcation. The color doesn't fit, it's more red. But you also see here what? You see that there is a hyperkeratotic part which is a viral wart that has been treated with silver nitrate and this is exogenous pigmentation. Exogenous pigmentation, like a hemorrhage, can give rise to parallel lines on the ridges or the parallel ridge pattern. So here the parallel ridge pattern is not a clue to melanoma, it is a cliché. Now what about this part here? Here you see parallel lines where? In the furrows. So you see a parallel furrow pattern. Now, this is a clue to nevus, an acral nevus, of course. Now, let's look at the entire lesion. Is this a nevus? You see here a clinical view, and we don't need dermatoscopy because the dermatoscopy is misleading here. You see here a chaotic lesion with a flat part, and here you see a structureless, more elevated part, maybe. This is a melanoma with a parallel furrows pattern. But of course it's a chaotic lesion, it's large, it must be a melanoma, despite a parallel furrows pattern. In other words, a parallel furrows pattern can be misleading and a cliché on acral lesions. In the same sense as a parallel ridge pattern can be cliché and misleading. Clue or cliché? Now here you see a clue that we published in the Blue Journal, some um, some years ago, and it is usually a good clue to what? To pigmented bone disease. Here you see pigmented bone disease, 
a flat scaly lesion slightly pigmented light brown here you see the dermatoscopy you see the coiled vessels that are typical here you see close-up of the periphery and you see small brown dots arranged in lines which we published as a clue to pigmented bones disease and here you also see the coiled vessels and it is a very good clue to pigmented bones disease but like every clue even if it is published by our group it can become a cliche and here you see what you see dots at the periphery that are arranged in lines and this could be well the periphery of pigmented bones disease you want to see the entire lesion the entire lesion looks like this and this cannot be pigmented bones disease because it's elevated it's ulcerated and it has the typical vessels of the basal cell carcinoma serpentine branched vessels a clue always has to be interpreted in the context here you see what you see also dots and clots in lines at the periphery but this here is the periphery of a melanoma and it's not a difficult diagnosis when you see the entire lesion clue or cliche here you see what you see terminal hairs and you see a pattern of clots or brown globules now terminal hairs as you know are a clue to congenital nevus correct now let's look at the entire lesion and you see the entire lesion has a pattern of clots or brown globules it's the same and it has terminal hairs which makes it a congenital nevus now what about this lesion here you also see terminal hairs here an increase in terminal hairs but you also see white lines now when you look at the entire lesion you see what you see a chaotic lesion with white lines white lines are a clue to a malignant lesion can be found in melanoma and pcc of course can also be found in benign lesions but in a chaotic lesion with a reticular pattern it is a clue to melanoma and this is a melanoma now why does this melanoma have an increase in terminal hairs because it developed in a pre-existing congenital nevus it is a cliche that melanomas don't have terminal hairs of course they may have terminal hairs where does this cliche come from it comes from decades back when the only differential diagnosis of a melanoma was a large congenital nevus because 100 years ago or some decades ago a melanoma when it was diagnosed it was very big very large larger than one centimeter most of the time larger than two centimeters and the only meaningful clinical differential diagnosis was congenital nevus you could say a melanoma does not have terminal hairs and a congenital nevus usually has terminal hairs but this is from ancient history now we can diagnose melanoma so early when it still may have terminal hairs so terminal hairs do not exclude melanoma clue or cliche what is this this is also a clue published by us in the archives of dermatology and it is a very good clue you see here what you see keratin and you see blood spots and you see white circles keratin plus blood spots plus white circles usually point to the diagnosis of squamous cell carcinoma including keratoacantoma now let's look at the entire lesion this is the clinical image and this is very good for squamous cell carcinoma it's a non-pigmented nodule with keratin and blood spots squamous cell carcinoma now what about this part you see keratin scale here you see white circles and you see blood spots now what do we have again a squamous cell carcinoma question mark now let's look at the entire lesion and you see that the entire lesion looks completely different of course you see here white circles and even white clots and you see keratin with blood spots but the context is not the context of a, of a squamous cell carcinoma or keratoacantoma you see a chaotic pigmented lesion with blue structural zone and white lines and this is of course a melanoma and this part of the melanoma here the upper part has keratin on top with acantosis of the epidermis maybe due to scratching and rubbing or due to epithelial hyperplasia brought into being because of the growth of the melanoma who knows but 
as you can see, every criterion can be a clue or it can become a cliché depending on the context. And it's your responsibility to differentiate between clues and clichés and not look only at clues without the context. Thank you.